All right, let's get into it. So one of the anime that we need, uh, yeah, we need to do a Wednesday show. I said, what anime do we watch? I the looked kids up, are all watching Dr. Stone. I, I went and I looked on Crunchyroll. I looked at what we judged. Dr. Stone was near the top. Let's watch that. It sounded like the premise had possibilities. Everyone on Earth gets turned to stone. That's all I knew. So yep. I watched enough episodes. I watched a set of ep- I watched three episodes, and then I said, all right. How m- I usually we watch four, but I kind of want to learn exactly this much stuff before I talk about it. And I learned exactly that much stuff, I think, in episode six. And I think seven episodes were out, but yep. I decided not to watch any more ever. <laughs> and I'll just read spoilers when the show yep. is done. Uh, sim- that's my, my similar, uh, that's how I handled Attack on Titan. After the first two se- two seasons, I was like, you know what? I'm going to read the spoilers to find mm-hmm. out what the secret of space is. I know the secret of space. Do not watch any more of that show. Uh, I don't know if you even want to know what the secret of space is. Yep. But I do want to know what the secret of space is in Dr. Stone. So here's the deal. There's a high school kid. He's in hi- typical hi- uh, Japan high school. Yep. He obviously, all the most of the other people in the high school are non-characters because they don't look cool. Yep. He looks cool. It's this, weird, though. They, the character design of these two main characters are like a cross between Yu-Gi-Oh! and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, they're pretty extreme characters with like crazy hair but the main crazy guy, eyes. The, the dumb guy, the real main guy who isn't the doctor. Yep. He is the other guy's not a doctor either. The stone is the doctor. <laughs> the, the soap is the doctor. Well, there's another doctor. St- the stone itself is the... Anyway. Yeah, but there's... It's weird because they, when I saw his face, it, he looked weird, and I realized that he is a weird amalgamation of the most generic possible anime high school protagonist crossed with basically the golden boy face. Kinda. Like he makes the golden boy face. A lot. Like to the point that... I think it's based on the art style of the manga creator. Yep. As soon as he frowned, I was like... It's just the golden boy. Holy crap. Yeah. Golden boy. And then you, they briefly introduce, because he stops in the science lab for like two seconds, this clearly other main character who is like science guy who's a genius. Yep. And then they introduce the girl the main guy is into is obviously also a main character. And, so, and then they of, do this in about a minute. Yeah, so here's the thing. I'll break in here as we describe this shot. This was the first make or break moment for what I was going to say about the show, because my worry was... There's like five episodes of build up to all the crap and introduce nope. all the people. Nope. One minute, the, and then as soon as he's going to confess his love to this girl outside by the tree, the girl you just saw for the first time, who he's been talking about for the past maybe minute, the whole entire earth, everyone, every human being on earth, some mysterious green wave it comes and turns everyone to stone. Yep. But and then he the show is, starts. But then it's just him. He's still conscious, and he's just like, I can't pass out. What if I die? And for... 3,700 years, he's just laying there, just trying to stay conscious. Right. He really, really, really wants to somehow stay conscious, get out of this rock that he's been... The people clearly have not been turned to stone like Medusa turns people to stone. He there, He's like alive inside a stone shell. Which is already terrifying now which because it also, implies... Also, it makes no sense because that would be worse than solitary confinement. You would just go insane very oh, yeah. quickly. The, in, a, in a real world, the, the this doctor kid probably would have woken up fine and everyone else would have woken up insane. Mm, doctor kid would also... No, mm. because the doctor kid with his second counting... Uh, not that any of you listening to Wednesday Geek Nights have read The Prince of Nothing, but <laughs> that's some Kellish shit right there. Kind of, but I still don't think. Anyway, the point is it's very unrealistic. It's an anime. So uh, the one guy concentrates on the girl that he wants to confess to. The other guy just for counts three, time. For four or 5,000 years, <laughs> the other guy literally counts every single second while simultaneously having thoughts in the other half of his brain See, <laughs> about, about the situation, whatever. And he's science guy, and basically, yeah, they wake up thousands of years later, and no one else is awake. So my second point, when they wake up- And now you've got brains guy and bronze guy teaming up to rebuild civilization from scratch. And I'll point out, up to this point, not only is it moving fast, uh, but it's also pretty funny- like, right away, the science guy's like, hey, I made you a love potion. I'm the science guy. And he's like, I would never use such a thing. And he pours it out. And then the kid's like, good thing he poured it out. That was just fucking gasoline. 
Yep. I didn't make a love potion. No, That's he's not like a he's thing. like I was like I was 100% sure he wouldn't take it. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah, anyway. He does that a lot where he does the I'm X percent sure. Yep. And it's actually pretty like he's a pretty funny character. Like right. it's like, a little bit of C3PO. It is. But yeah, so this anime I see it as a combination of of aspects of other anime. So the the comedy aspect, right? That sort of the wackiness there that you see, right? Really reminds me of, you know, not of like a Cromarty, which is sort of like the, you know, no, no it's it's just like, um, you know, it's just sort of like these the, you know, the extreme, not SD art wise, but like extreme reactions, like you know, someone says something and someone's like, holy shit, what? Yep. It's like really? the shonen equivalent of like the SD stuff that happens in like Fushigi right. Yugi. All the characters' reactions to things like are are extreme and like when they're emotional, it's like you know they cry and like a river of tears come out, right? You know that kind of thing. Yep. Right? So th- this was the next point. Now they. Don't so this- then the the set the other anime I think is a combination of mm-hmm. right. Well, it's, it isn't it? It's not even anime. It's still a manga. Is it has the sort of storytelling structure of Delicious in Dungeon. Where it's yeah, like you're see that. there, you know. There's this 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 plot that's happening, right? Uh, you know, oh, the world has turned to stone. What do we do? We're trying to accomplish this. We're trying, right? But they pause and explain science things the same way the Delicious yep. in Dungeon pauses and explains, you know, recipes of monsters. The same but- way that any of those, <laughs> you know, I guess Mushishi pauses and explains a Mushi. The made up thing. nonsense of Mushishi. Right. But it, uh, and it's the, pretty accurate to the point that the show has all these warnings at the end, like, kids, don't fucking eat mushrooms in the wild. Right. Uh, the other thing it combines with, I think, is obviously Attack on Titan, which yep. is, you know, what is this, the big secret of this world? Then obviously Attack on Titan isn't the, isn't the first one to do it, but it does it in the you know Attack on Titan way. Like, Evangelion also has what is the secret of this world, yep. but it doesn't come across the same way. This is overt ham-fisted what is the secret of this world but in another right? point what, one thing that I, I do enjoy a lot about it is that uh like uh, in western fandom people like especially fanboys really like the zombie apocalypse like okay basically all the people are gone you got a small amount of people and there's zombies everywhere what do you do like how do you survive right. but in this case how do you survive like the enemy is just like the conflict is science. Like, all right, we got to make food. We got to make shelter. We got to make fire. Right. We got to make. And that is the final anime that I think this is a combination of. Is that it is a combination of also the MMO anime. How is this a combination of the MMO anime where there's no video games involved? Well, I'll tell you. I hit the. I made they two simply sticks. have replaced the MMO with a game like Don't Starve or even Minecraft. You know, any of these yep. games, the survival type games where you start or, uh, you know, One Hour, One Life, any of these games you start with nothing and you build up from the, the, the only things that you can gather from the environment and create full things by combining and combining and combining and combining. And it moves so fast there, so it's li- it's always right? literally like a video game. Like, whoop, they once they start mm. picking mushrooms, now they just have mushrooms all the time. We never even look at that again. Right. It's a, It has that same structure of one of those games, and it comes across the same way as when an MMO is adapted to an anime, at, you know, say Hacksign, just as one of those a different game, slightly yep. different game genre adapted to anime slash manga. Right, it's and got, t- and so take all those all those elements, right? The 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 wacky comedy, the pause aside to explain science, you know, the big secret of this world, and the survival game, and put them all together, and that is Doctor Stone. It, well, it's got a a sous of Fist of the North Star, in the sense that it's there are some action scenes. It's a post apocalyptic world, but the action scenes when when humans conflict with each other, which I was wondering if that would even happen. I was wondering if the show was literally just going to be we science for twenty four episodes. No, but it does, it does move quickly to its credit. So like far. they wake up another person like almost right away. Yeah, like they, they do not hesitate. And also the girl, right? So the the statue of the girl, the guy finds it right yep. away. Obviously, a, see that was my warning. If the, if the statue of the girl had been a statue for more than like five or six right. episodes, you assume that like oh, waking up the girl is going to be like the last episode. No, he wakes her up in episode three. Yep, and he was going to wake her or up four earlier or something like that. Like right away, but they wake up Muscle Guy instead. They had to wake up Muscle guy because lions come so that's the fist of the north star bit because muscle guy basically immediately turns into a fist of the north star villain right like, well he's not really a villain he's a good he's good but well, he's 
He's good. He in just quotes, got one bad. He's got one bad good idea. But he's dangerous, and he's making the society of muscle men. Yeah, kinda. Like right away, like I'm stronger than all of you, and you he's can't like, kill he's me. He's like he's like Rao. He's he's bad, but he's not the. Yeah, and he's. I said Fist and the North Star villain. He's not. That's like, why I thought of Rao. But there no. are other villains like that. Yeah, but there are. He's not one of those like skeletory Fist and the North Star villains. No. He's more. He's he's a conflicted villain. Right. But. Uh, this is where the show gets a little, he fucking punches a lion to death and then turns its skin into an outfit, like, instantly. Mm -hmm. Like, he can just fight lions. Yeah, it's... it's, He is immune to crossbows. This guy is all science-y, right? The science guy. And he tries to, he's trying to figure out the mystery of, you know, why everyone turned to stone. which And how how come only people and sparrows turned to stone? Yep. Right? And it, you know, it's like, okay, you know, see, everything's cool here. Everything's really legit science. There's no bullshit going on. why does nitric acid wake people up? Right. Uh. Well, at least, at least it's real science for the yeah. acid, you know. You, uh, but the thing is, it's like he doesn't question his own superpowers, the superpowers of his best friend, the superpower of the guy they wake up, or the apparent lack of superpower so far that's obvious of the girl. Now, that's what I don't know. Because like so in a show like, like Utena, like, are the It's super- like a little bit of Lord of the Flies here, right? Where yep. each person you know, is trying to survive and each person is a specialty, but they're all superpowered in that specialty beyond all reality. Except the girl, who probably has a secret superpower, and they're not questioning these superpowers, and it seems they did have the superpowers pre-everyone turning to stone. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's like, whoa. So that's what I wonder, because in shows like Utena, uh, the weird superpower crap that happens that you might just write off as anime crap has is literally the plot. It is explained specifically, but then in some other anime... Well, it's also the plot in One Punch Man. Yeah. But then, yeah, exactly. Why? What is One Punch Man's deal? That anyway. Mm-hmm. But in other anime, yeah, this person just randomly has powers because it's an anime. That's it. There's yep. no explanation. That's the only thing that's like not. They didn't even try to explain in any yep. way. My my based on the like six the few episodes I saw because not even there aren't even that many episodes out yet. Mm-hmm. There are going to be twenty four episodes total, a grand total of seven. Is that going to cover the whole thing? Which I uh, guess I assume is the manga. Doubtful because the manga is thirteen volumes. It started in twenty seventeen. It's already got thirteen volumes. It's ongoing. Okay. So the manga is still going, and there are thirteen volumes of it. All right. But yeah, uh, so that's that explains what the show is. The thing is, I don't think I really want to watch more of this show. It's interesting because, because it's so, the characters are so two dimensional. They may be the most two dimensional characters I've ever seen. I was almost inclined to keep watching just because, despite that. It was moving so fast. The plot moves at a very rapid pace. Yeah, like I said, three, they wake they're up, already like trying to make gunpowder. Yep. It's like they move it right fucking along. But at the same time, not waiting. Uh, despite how fast it's moving, based on the opener alone, there are a shit ton of characters. Well, I mean, you didn't. If you watched two more episodes like I did, yep. you'd have seen they meet someone who is not awoken by them. There are yep. other people who have already been awake. When basically, when they set off the gunpowder, it makes smoke, and then they yep. see a smoke signal in the distance, and they're like, whoa, other people, oh my god. So, on one hand, I'm very happy to see a lot of the things you could normally get out of a like, fantasy world isekai, or out of a like uh, zombie apocalypse type thing, but instead, it's more like, kind of real, well, kind of real, science based, mm-hmm. like, it's a very different, yeah. like, setting for this kind of story right. and I'm I think intrigued it's just by the, that. Yeah. But but I, it's still in the end a shonen show. Yes, yeah, so the, the two dimensional characters I think are the number one thing that turns me off. The rapid pace is good because you're not sit around doing nothing. Yeah, as but, opposed to say Attack on Titan, which the, just like stops. But you're rap, you're rapidly plowing through a really flimsy kind of meh plot. You're yeah. not you're not rapidly plowing through a, a, a deep meaty plot that it's gives not, you a lot to think about. It's not and like Escaflone, which is right. just like every episode is a two hour right. movie condensed and to twenty three minutes. The thing is that I think stands out most about this show is it definitely feels like somebody created this. For Japanese children, which is all, all anime is created for Japanese yep. children, almost all of it, right? But uh, sp- and there's so much stuff that blatantly reeks of we are trying, this show is trying to teach Japanese children how to be, right? It's like, you know, oh, that guy who is, you know, only wants to give rid of the old people, he's bad. Look, you can solve anything with science. Science is good. Oh, you know, I'm not amazed with your science. I'm amazed with your hard work and how you yep. you, you didn't you just 
patiently kept working until you you know got the job done. You, you took you hours, but you, you saved me. You beat a lion to death with your own hands, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like the show reeks of like pausing constantly, and they say things that really sound like things that like would be after like the more you know star or whatever. But to right? their credit, <laughs> in a lot of shows that teach stuff, they tend to. Like uh, like Mayashiman had this problem a little bit. They spend a lot of time talking about very little when they actually explain stuff. In this show, they explain pretty accurate things very quickly, and then they move on. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, here's the chemical. Here's what it does. 30 seconds later, they're fighting a lot. Oh, did you know what you can use seashells for? Yeah, you can make sodium bicarbonate, and you can yeah. use that for this, and you can use it for that, and you can use It's like, oh, okay. Use I'm make- curious where they're really going to go in the long run with gunpowder, though, because gunpowder is not hard to make. You know what's hard to make? A cannon. Yeah. There's a reason why <laughs> cannons are... T- well, I think, explosives are way easier to make than things to harness explosions. Right. Well, the show is called Dr. Stone, and the first time they mention Dr. Stone... when he makes soap, and he's like, this is the only thing that will keep us alive yeah, in this we, world he's like, if we get, he's, like, he's like, without society, we have no medicine. If we get sick, we're fucked. The soap, soap is, is our Dr. Stone. The soap is our Dr. Stone. I but love it when shows say the name of the show in the show. They say the name of the show again because, as it turns out, right... Uh, when they're covered in stuff, you'll notice all the characters have these cracks on their faces. Yeah. That's because... At of- first you think it's just character design, but then... No, like- it's because the stone was cracked when they were turned to stone, and apparently when you get unstoned, that unstoning, like, heals you in that part that you got unstoned in. So wait, uh, so you like, know they're going to restone someone at some point. I, mean, I don't know, maybe, but there's actually the girl, they unstone her and like her foot is still stoned and then they unstone the foot and then like she, it, like her foot is like healed like somehow when it, like it hurt and then yep. when they and then it got healed by the unstoning. So and they're like maybe this stone that everyone turned into is the doctor stone. Maybe what turned the world to stone wasn't malevolent but was benevolent. So these are my working theories having seen a little bit of this show. So they already have two meanings for Dr. Stone. Yep. If you maybe count the third one and that the science guy, he's not a doctor, but it's like, you know, it's the Stone Age. Maybe you could call him, you know, because he's a smart science guy, Dr. Yep. Stone, maybe kind of. Gotta see the Stone Doctor, Dr. Dr. Stone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so my idea number one is this is a wind of amnesia situation. If any of you have watched old anime, mm-hmm. aliens did this to see if humans well, are there's actually I don't know if you saw the scene where the science guy is thinking, what are the possibilities? Number one, yep. aliens. Number two, evil mad scientists. Yep. Uh, no, number three, like foreign government. Yep. Number four, some sort of an, an environmental. He's like going through the list of all the things that you would think it of. It could like, be an oryx and Craig situation. He's like he's like he's like it could have been a virus that did this to the to the humans, and only and the virus only affected swallows and humans or bacteria. But that, that would explain the light, right? But it's like he's trying to he comes up with all the explanations. It's that you're thinking of too, and he runs down them all. Yep. He doesn't, he doesn't settle on. He doesn't know yet. He's still trying to figure it out. But my real thinking is either it's a wind of amnesia situation of aliens like testing to see if humans are worthy. Two, the world, our actual world, is actually a fantasy world from a long time ago, and this is the world resetting in some way. Mm-hmm. Like I could see that, like some weird thing happening with that. Uh, but everything is see- si- everything is science, though. Yep. True. There is no, it's not a fantasy world. It's a, I science, see, it's a science world. I could see benevolent aliens doing this to protect us from some cosmic event that was going to kill us. Mm. Like radiation storms coming through and the aliens like do this to save us. That's the only thing they could think of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I mean, maybe so aliens- if you're the kind of anime fan who likes, you know, like the most popular, you know, shonen type animes then you're probably going to like this type of show. I like this way more than any other shonen show. Yeah, I guess it's better than like a Naruto or something that goes into a a, a tournament and drags on. Yep. But it's still, you know, but it's it's better than an Attack on Titan because it seems like it might actually be going somewhere. But I don't think it's it's going, like, Boku It's still shallow as all fuck. Boku Rano was another show that was... Well, Boku Rano was legit, though. Yeah, but it was characters in a predicament. Those characters were not two-dimensional. True. They were not two-dimensional, but it was still... It was characters in a, like, very contrived predicament who intelligently worked to solve the problem... And Bokurano was going somewhere that would make you cry a lot. Right, but like those Bokurano show... characters all had their own deep backstories with things they had to deal with. Yeah, this show's all backstory the, these characters is like, is like a, you are I... science guy, you are girl, you are, you know, a uh, 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 brawny guy, you, <laughs> like are, fi- you, are, fighting, you are fighting guy. It's literally... 
40 seconds on screen of a long time ago an adult hit me. No, no, there actually is a whole like half an episode that shows his backstory. So it's and more than that? It's lit- No, it's literally just dad bought him a bunch of science stuff and he always scienced. He wanted to go, no, to, no, sp- I'm he wanted to, go to space. Because fighting guy... His backstory is literally one time an adult hit me when I was a kid, so I'm going to murder all the adults. Yes. But that is... It is the, like I said, is the most, maybe even one-dimensional characters. Yep. Right? They don't have it. They're just literally science guy, brawny guy, fighting guy, girl. Yep. At one point, that might even just be zero-dimensional. There's no dimension. It's just fighting also, guy. Also, you know, super sexist that obviously... I don't, it doesn't even need to be mentioned that it's super sexist that the girl the character is The only thing that could be girl. worse is if the girl character's superpower ends she up being only, some she sort only, of nurturing healing yeah, crap. She only exists as love interest and thing to be protected, defended, etc. Though in the opener, there are use a lot it, of other... as motivation for men. There are clearly a bunch of other female characters. They did. The, the person that they met who is not... Um, uh, who is not, you know, yep. thousands of years old, was a girl. So, If I were you, though, like, if you're an anime fan at all, just watch the first episode because it moves. If you're an f- anime fan who wants the highbrow animes, stay far away. But if you're okay with the lowbrow popular animes, then this is the lowbrow popular anime of the season, and it's better than other similarly equally lowbrow animes. Oh, God, Uncrunchable. Views are like this, also liked Log Horizon, Majin Bone, Taboo Tattoo, and Bleach. Yeah. So that's that's it. I'm not gonna watch any more because I've seen what I gotta see. I'm gonna read. Spoilers I'm gonna read a spoiler when because I all really do- want to know. I only want to know the big. I've learned everything I need to know except for the one big secret, which I can now learn from yep. a spoiler. At some of course, point. be careful because I know the fullness of Attack on Titan and uh, kind of wish I didn't. Well, I don't care that if I if I don't waste my time watching the show, then it's not a problem. Yep, but I kind of wish I didn't know what Attack on Titan's about. Yeah. Also, <laughs> probably no one, the writer might not even know because the manga's go- ongoing. Yeah, and you know, serialized manga sometimes. Like, I'm waiting for the tournament to enter the show, the science tournament. <laughs> it, it could get to one. Because it's already gearing up to, like, punching nation it's versus gear, it's sciencing gearing, nation. It is gearing up to a war between brains and brawn to yep. see whether uh, which society will prevail, right? Because it's, it's about that, you know, sort of dynamic, right, where it's like, okay, it doesn't matter how smart you are. If there's a strong person, they rule the world until you have society built. And then people who are smart rule the world, and being strong doesn't help you gain yep. power. Which is part, you know... Fist of the North Star, Mad Max, in a world where all technology's gone, the biggest, strongest, shittiest dudes end up being in charge of things yep. because they can physically force themselves into power. It's an old story. All right. And we're done. That's an anime. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.